Hello, my name is Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor. This is a piece that I did for the University of Tampa, a Sykes Chapel Center for Interface Studies. This is named Infinite Fate. This, rep this represents the faith of, of major patrons here at the University. It's top of a bronze sculpture. That's the Mobius that I named Infinite Faith. I produced the maquette for this project uh, several years before this project came to me. This, this is the Mobius. The Mobius is a strip that represents infinity or the infinite plane. One end of the strip has been twisted and it's reconnected. So if you trace the surface in one revolution, in the second revolution you'll be back where you started. So it represents an unending plane. This configuration of the Mobius represents the, the outer fold on the road, the hood, worn by a head bowed in prayer. This is a female faith feature uh, where the head is bowed in prayer, uh, such as the Blessed Mother. This is the object that represents that head bowed in prayer. If you swing over to the other side, on the reaper, the same Mobius will represent that same fold on the hood, on the road, of a head that's raised in the field that's looking up. In this context, it represents the unification of man and woman, male and female, husband and wife, and their intimate, their uh, intimate faith. This, this concept came to me uh, in about 2006, one day working in the studio. I produced it and literally hung it in the rack. And in uh, December of 2008, I was contacted to be involved with the production of the base because of my expertise in the stone crash. It eventually progressed to me doing the entire project. We worked with uh, architects out of Atlanta, university officials, and with the patrons. The base is meant to represent their struggle. My one of my one of my training, one of the aspects of my training involves shell rock pitch. Shell rock pitch is the production of carapace or shell-shaped breaks out of stone that are fully devoid of any tool marks or stunts where you struck the stone with, with a tool, it crushes crystals and makes a white mark. This is a fully virgin surface. Uh, it's nearly a lost art. My cousin and I, the only ones left in the United States to do this work. Many people claim to, but they end up carving it. It's not the same. This is a very coarse, prickly sharp surface with strong light. It has many pinpoints of light or individual surfaces of light. And there's nothing that, that nothing that's the same as shell rock pitch. The patrons and the architects were very inspired by the Japanese sculptor Noguchi. And as a result, they asked me to incorporate tool marks as part of the design. The reason being that many people see this stone and they think that as a sculptor, I went to a, a quarry or some other source found this large rough piece of stone and just carved this polished pile. That's not the case. This came to me with completely flat sides at this height and I had to waste the stone off in such a way to, to produce the shape and all these surfaces. And then after I did that, I had to carve this column and polish it. But they wanted tool marks left in the stone so that they would represent the scars that man inflicts upon his life, upon himself, upon God's plan when he tries to do something that God doesn't have ready for that person or for that person as a purpose. So the tool marks were left in place. Uh, in the industry, if someone ordered shell rock pitch, this is considered to be a great failure and here it's part of the design. So there's various spots 
on this phone where the tool marks are left in place, they weren't removed, they were exaggerated so they would remain as I work. And it creates a very wonderful, uh, very obvious feature where it's clear that a man worked the show numerous drill marks of this organ just to match the show. After I produced the show off, then I had to carve the paw. All those carved is elliptical, it's closer to the shape of an egg, and uh, it's just a round column. This is a, uh, this is a nod to the cycle of life and God's intent. God revealed this Mobius concept to me in terms of this form. Uh, the original one is about 20 or 22 inches tall. This one is 30 inches or 2 foot 8 tall. It was enlarged slightly. This was thickened and then it was reproduced in bronze with a, uh, with a, a white bronze team. That was closely, more closely tied to granite than the thick brownish gold bronze. On this side, the original renderings, the concept that was brought to me to begin the discussion, there was a large S-shaped break in the stone. As a sculptor, you have certain capacities when you start doing the shell rock pitch to direct the work, but it's always very organic, and it happens on God's plan, not yours. Uh, you only, you only cause problems. The stone had held very strongly here, and I had broken it several times, working it down. And we, I broke here, trying to waste off these tool marks. We got a nice big break, and then it reversed here, went all the way back, almost to the top. God gave us this serpentine break that had been proposed uh, in discussion. This is the most dramatic feature of the entire stone to me in the sculpt. This is, this, is, this is the beautiful side. This is the back that amazes me. When God created this stone millions of years ago, this wonderful grain pattern was put in the stone. Many, many years later, this concept was given to me one day in the studio by the Lord. And when the time came, he sent me this piece of stone, he sent me this project to bring it all together. Uh, very moving to me. The patron, one of the patrons, broke into just very, very energetic tears, burst into tears, I there's no other way to describe it. When I showed her the original incident of Faith Mobius and explained it to her, she loved it. And that was a wonderful moment for me as a sculptor, as an artist, to have that kind of connection. We phased the Mobius in this manner because a number of these forms on the stone and these facets and surfaces mimic the Mobius. We have this, this round convex surface with this round convex surface. We have this undercut and this undercut here. We have similar contour with just a general scoop and then a round here with this scoop and then this round. The back even works in the same manner. When we have a quick reverse, we have this sharp edge here that reverses on the back. Uh, once again, there's only so much I can do as an artist. God's hand is in this. It's just up to me to be the one that tries not to damage it. So, this is a wonderful piece. The original stone uh, was about five foot six, uh, about five foot six thick, about about six and a half feet through, and it's five foot two tall. It's sunk two inches in the ground, it's five feet tall here. Now it's about four six by about five six. We took approximately uh, seven tons off the stone. The original weight was just under 28,000 pounds. The finished weight is 13,700 pounds. The Mobius is two foot eight on a two inch pedestal. Uh, the total install height. Uh, of this is seven foot eight inches. From, from this to the top is two foot eight. So, uh, wonderful piece. Here located in the meditation garden with water features and planting at the university.